this morning um, to bring forth the word of God. Um, can I have you guys do something for me real quick? Can everyone please stand up once again? And real quick, can you guys just lift your hands up and look towards heaven and tell God thank you? Just say thank you, God. And what are we telling God thank you? God, thank you for waking us up this morning. God, thank you for starting us on our way. God, thank you for keeping clothes on our back, foods on our table. God, we thank you for your blood. God, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us. God, we thank you for your grace. God, we just thank you for your mercy, your everlasting love. So real loud, one more time, everyone say, God, I thank you. Say, God, I thank you. God, I thank you. All right, you all can have a seat. Amen. Amen. I just think that we should give God and praise in everything that we do. Whether we're up, whether we're down, we should always give God praise this morning. Um, I'm going to come before you all talking briefly about preparing for the journey. I have a few examples that I would love to share with you all. I want to thank God for um, Dr. Hill and the staff of ACS to allow me to speak to you guys today and minister to you all um, in the time period that we have. I'm going to be coming from Jeremiah, the first chapter, um, the fourth through the tenth verse. And I'm going to read it pretty fast. I teach some of you in here so you guys kind of know how I roll. But I'm going to read it pretty fast because I, I really want to get this message across to you guys this morning. Okay? And it says, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in your womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. Then said I, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to whom I send you. And whatever I command you, you shall speak. Don't be afraid of people in their faces. Say that real loud. Say, don't be afraid of people in their faces. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand. He touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to, to, to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. These are the words that takes place in the first chapter of Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a young boy, pretty much like you guys, just a little older than you. And Jeremiah was minding his own business. Granted, in his bloodline, there were already kings and queens, but Jeremiah was a young kid, just like many of you. Jeremiah was minding his very own business. Then all of a sudden, God spoke to Jeremiah. He said, you, Jeremiah, I called you to be something great. Could you imagine just sitting there doing what you do? I guess you guys are on Instagram, Twitter, snapping, all that fun stuff on your PS, minding your own business, and all of a sudden you hear the voice of the Lord say, hey, you. Well, first of all, if you're in a room by yourself and you heard that, you'll be kind of scared and kind of freaked out. But when God calls you, he saw something in Jeremiah. He called out Jeremiah. He said, hey, Jeremiah, I'm calling you. The word of the Lord says that he ordained Jeremiah. The word ordained means to anoint he set Jeremiah apart from anybody. He goes along in the next verse to say, I've called you in your mother's womb. So before you were even born, before your mom and dad were even born, before your great parents or your great grandparents were even born, God called you just how God called Jeremiah. There is purpose over your life. That's how it was for Jeremiah. But Jeremiah was like, God, you called me. Okay, I'll, I'll accept the calling. Okay, cool, you called me. But not only do you call me, God says, listen, he, Jeremiah goes, but God, I'm like really young. What am I supposed to do? These people are going to laugh at me. These people are going to look at me like I'm crazy. God says, don't worry about people in their faces. So forget about what others have to say about you. There's something important on your life. God realized that as soon as he created Jeremiah, this young man is going to be a prophet to the nations. There's something so great in him. There's something so awesome in him that I see it before he was even born. So I know that he has to do it. But Jeremiah had to answer the call. Because the call on Jeremiah's life was so strong, it was so important, of course, Jeremiah feared. I would fear too. If I'm young, if I'm 12, I'm 13, I'm 14, I wouldn't know what to do. God, you called me to do what now? You sure me? 
You want me to speak? You want me to play? I got to play football. You want me to play this instrument? You want me to stand out? You guys, you guys are teenagers. I know standing out is so like, uh, it goes against everything of the teenage principles, of your teenage rules. But Jeremiah, because he knew that he was called, because he knew that he was so special, he had to be set apart, meaning he couldn't do what everybody else did. When God has a calling on your life, you cannot do what everyone else does. It's called being marked by God. I have, for some of the girls, they kind of talk to me after class, I have a special anointing on my life. So I always tell the girls, Dr. B doesn't have any friends. It's hard for me to keep friends because of the anointing that I have on my life. I'm covered. My anointing is not for everybody, and my anointing can't be tainted, meaning everyone can't get too close to me because of the anointing that I have on my life. Many of you all have the exact same thing. You guys are anointed. I see it on a daily basis. A lot of you guys are called. A lot of you guys are chosen. A lot of you guys are marked by God for goodness. But because of the choices that we make, because of the decisions that we make, and sometimes living in fear, we don't want to really be who God called us to be. I know many of us in here, I hear you guys, I see some of your writing journals, you guys have dreams that, that exceed my thinking, that exceed your parents' thinking or any of your other teachers' thinking. However, you're marked by God. There's something special about you, the way you are. Raise your hand if you want to be honest. Raise your hand if you ever felt like you just did not belong with a certain group of people. Like, I just can't do it. I feel too different. There's something about me. I just, uh, right? You're not different. You're not different. You're not weird. You're not odd. You're unique. The Bible tells us that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. God has us exactly how he wants us. Because, why? There's purpose in our life. So, Jeremiah, much like you guys, Jeremiah chilling, doing his thing. God calls him and says, hey, you're going to be a prophet to the nations. I have a, you know, I have a great assignment ahead for you. Jeremiah says, okay, God, I'll accept the call. However, I'm young. What does God tell him to do? Don't look at people in their faces. When you guys know who you really are, when you guys really understand how important it is that the calling on your life, the anointing on your life, the gifts that God has given you over your life, you can't be afraid of people. You guys understand me? People are flesh. This is something that has to deal with the spirit. God has given you something so unique, so, so different. People are not supposed to understand it. God is going to tell you who he's assigning you to. In the story, he said he's, he, he, he gave Jeremiah to the nations. Jeremiah was supposed to be a prophet to the nations. He didn't say Jeremiah was going to be a prophet to Hollywood Christian School. He didn't say Jeremiah was going to be a prophet to the city of Hollywood. He said to the nations. When God has called you, everybody won't understand it. Some of you guys are like, God, you know, Dr. B, I was called to do this. It's not for everybody to understand. Sometimes you guys are going to find yourself in a place mommy and daddy won't understand. Your teachers won't understand. Dr. B won't understand. Sometimes you won't even understand it. That's why you guys have to seek God. God, what's my purpose? I know I'm here for a greater cause. God, I know you called me. I know I'm a little different. Some of you guys have um, dreams and skills and aspirations that you guys never heard of. And you guys, some of you guys are afraid to tap in to what God has given you, that gift in which God has given you. But I came to let you guys know that it's okay. God has called you. He has anointed you and ordained you. The gifts that's on your life, God gave that to you before you were even born before your mommy was even born, before daddy was even born. God knew what he wanted you to do. The thing is, will you answer the call of God? Okay? It goes on to say, am I making sense? Okay, just making sure. Going on to say that God, okay, Jeremiah says, okay, I'm going to do what you want me to do. Don't be afraid of people in their faces. All right, cool, I am. I'm amped up. But God says, wait a minute, as much as you are going on your journey, you're going to have enemies that's going to rise up against you. So there are going to be some haters. I know y'all like that word, whatever. There are going to be some haters that's going to say, oh, they think they all that. Oh, she thinks she's good in that. Oh, they think they're, they're a very good artist or you're a very good musician. Listen, when you understand that you're called by God, you can't let that stuff get in your ear. You are called, but what does the Bible says? The Bible tells us in the 19th verse that, yes, they will fight against you. Your enemies will fight against you, but they shall not prevail. Why? Because God says, I am with you. Because God has anointed you and because God loves you the way that he does, God said that he is with you. There's no mountain too high. There's no valley too low that you will not be able to find God. 
So with that assignment over your life, whatever it is over your life, your visions, God is always with you. Say this real loud. With God, all things are possible. I say it real loud. With God, all things are possible. Don't be afraid to live in your truth. Your truth is you're called. That's the truth. Your truth is you're anointed. That's your truth. Your truth is you are ordained. There is something special about you. You are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's who you guys are. You are not of this world. You're not just another pretty girl, Instagram model. You know, you're not just one of the girls that's taking the little selfies and I can't do it, y'all laugh at me. But you're not, we're not that. That's not who you are. Those people, they have a special place. They have a special place in the world. Are we of the world or are we in Christ? We're in Christ, right? So what, when you're in Christ, what do you exude? You exude holiness. You exude righteousness. You exude purity, young ladies and young men. Your thoughts will be pure. Your ways will be pure, correct? Yes? All right. I'm having a little demonstration that I want to do with you. So we're going to talk about Jeremiah real quick. Jeremiah says, okay, God, I'm going to do what you told me to do. I'm preparing for this journey. I'm going to live out. You come to be a prophet. I'm called. I'm amped. I'm ready. Like, I'm, I'm going to get ready to do this thing. I know my enemy is going to try to prevail, but you're going to be with me. So preparing for the journey is much like preparing for the first day of school. Okay, I'm going to break this down for you guys. Preparing for the journey is much like preparing for the first day of school. So I got my book bag here. Let me see. Got my book bag. I got to pretend to be a teenager. Real quick, put my hoodie on, Max. Put a hoodie on, right? Okay. Got my book bag. I'm my own little personal Jeremiah, right? Evan, I'm good with sound. Gotcha. All right. So I'm Jeremiah. I'm chilling, right? Benji, I'm holding my straps, right? Okay. I'm Jeremiah. I'm like, all right, God. What's up? What, what? I'm called. I'm anointed. What you want me to do, right? God says, okay, go to the nations. But before you go, remember, it's the first day of school. Before you go, let me make sure you're equipped with everything that you need to get the job done. All right, first day of school, let's go through our book bag. We rolling up. Before we leave the house, you know, mommy's checking. It's 7.45, we gotta get to school at eight o'clock. Cool. Let me go through the book bag. Let me see what we got. Let's see what we got in the book bag. First day of school. We got some folders, right? We got some folders. What do you guys think folders are for? What do we use folders for in school? To hold what? To hold your paper, right? To hold your paper. But from a, thank you, Brian. But from a spiritual aspect, when you guys look at your folders, folders hold papers of what? Past tests that you had, things that got graded, things mommy has to sign. When you're going on your journey, when you believe God that he's going to anoint everything you do, remember your folders. Folders carry your past test. You can look to see of all the mistakes you made prior and know that I'm not going to make that mistake anymore. I messed up in this area, but I'm not going to do that anymore. Always carry your folders with you on your journey. Remind yourself of how far you come. If you look at your handwriting in first grade and your handwriting in eighth grade, you'll notice there is a big change, right? You guys can really write. Sometimes it's good to look back and see where God has brought you from. Sometimes it's good to look back and see, God, I'm not that girl anymore. I'm not that boy anymore. So sometimes you got to hold on to your folders during the journey, all right? Let's see what else we have in our book bag. Um, Uh-oh. Calculator. Oh, man. We got a calculator in our book bag. Something Dr. B does not use because she's not good at math at all, all right? So we have a calculator. What are calculators used for? Math, right? So calculators mean they add and subtract, right, sixth grade? They add and subtract. This calculator does all kinds of fun stuff, Brian. Thank you. Okay, add and subtract. On your journey, you need a calculator. If you're going to do what God has called you to do, you're going to need a calculator. Why, Dr. B, what are you referring to? Well, calculators add. Don't you want the blessings of God to be added to your life while you're on your journey? Don't you want to be pressed down, shaken together, running over? You want more love. You want more of God's joy, more of God's strength, more of God's faithfulness, more of God's patience. So you need to add a calculator in there. Also, calculate and subtract. Wherever you're going in life, everybody can't go with you. Your friend today may not be that friend that's going to help you along that journey. Do you guys remember the parable that Dr. Hill used about the wheat and the tares? 
a couple of weeks ago. And if you guys didn't understand it, think about it like this. There are two, there are two plants growing together. You think of you growing sunflowers. There's two plants growing together. They look exactly the same. You can't tell the difference between the good, ter the, the good sunflower and the bad one. That's pretty much the parable of the, the wheat and the, um, the wheat and the tear. They're growing together. You have to learn how to separate the good from the bad. That's what calculators are for. So in your journey, you say, God, take away every distraction, every spirit of fear, every person that's not for me. When you're on your journey, that's what God's going to do. God's going to add value to your life, and he's going to subtract those things that's not helpful for you. He's going to subtract those people who mean you no good, okay? Let's see. Uh-oh, this is my favorite one. Some headphones. You know, I know how y'all roll. They're not, they're not Beats by Dre. I'm sorry, I don't have that kind of money. They're my little, you know, little, I'm not going to listen to nothing in this demonstration. Just, it's a demonstration, okay? So, you listen to your headphones. What, what, what do we use headphones for? Music, right? But I know how the enemy, you know, the enemy plays with music because, you know, he was, that's what, that was his thing, okay? The enemy was like bomb when it came to music and singing. But when you are on your journey, we need to learn how to tune out what we're hearing. You cannot listen to everybody while you're on your journey. You cannot take everyone's advice when you're on your journey. When you're doing what God has called you to do, you can't listen to negative things. You have to be careful about what you hear. You have to be careful about what you're putting in your ear gates. You can be so excited about something. Oh, my God, Dr. B. And then, and then, and you tell your friend, you know me, I'm going to get excited about stuff. You tell your friend, they're going to be like, man, that's dumb. That's stupid. So you think you're going to get hyped listening to me? More than likely, you're going to take your friend's advice. And now your feelings hurt. And now your dreams have deterred. You guys have to be careful, especially when you call, especially when you're chosen, especially when you have huge dreams. You cannot listen to everybody. And you cannot go where everybody goes. You guys are understanding it? One more, and then we'll be done. This is my favorite one, and I'm going to end on this note. Water or liquid. I prefer water. Some of you guys come to school with your water bottles because you're drinking in my class. Smart water, Miss Green, wherever she is. Um, you're drinking in my class, right? Water. What's the significance of water? Can someone tell me? Thirst quencher. Look at this, my little preacher. Thirst quencher, right? On your journey, when you're becoming what God wants you to become, water, the significance of water is very valuable. The reason why? Water purifies. Water cleanses. The same thing that the Holy Spirit does. So when you're on your journey, you got to ask God for repentance. You got to ask God for salvation. Clean me, oh God. The book of Psalms, David wrote, God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit on the inside of me. Matter of fact, he said, purge me with hyssop. That means God cleanse me of everything that's not like you. My bad thoughts, my negative thoughts. God, I can't get lust off my mind. God, I can't get ideology off my mind, fornication off my mind. That's what water is for. God cleanse me. Purify me, God. I want to be more and more like you. You guys know me. Those who know my story knows I'm very skilled in a lot of areas but I'm not gifted. A lot of things that I do, I couldn't do it without the Holy Spirit. A lot of places I go, things I touch, I, I couldn't be anything without the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of things Dr. B can do, but then there are a lot of things that Dr. B and the Holy Spirit can get done together. Water is very important. That means you guys have to repent every day. That's, that means you guys got to thank God every day for another chance. God created me. Clean me, God. Clean my mind. Clean my heart. Clean my hands. God, I want to be valuable to the kingdom of God. That's what makes this journey so important, okay? So I'm going to end with this. If you know that you are marked by God, if you know that you are special and you are valuable to God, hold on to that. Never, ever stop dreaming. Never, ever stop believing that it can't happen. I did not forget this. Pencils. Can't find it. And I had a notebook in here. I took one of my kids' notebooks. Pencils. Pencils are going to be your, your, your greatest aspect on your journey. Why? Whatever it is, Habetha 2 and 2 says, write the vision and make it plain. Whatever you want to be when you grow up, whatever dreams that you have, what, I don't care what it is, how big it is, what kind of house you want, what kind of car you want, what kind of business you want to start, write the vision. You're never too young to write the vision. God speaks to those, the youth. In the, in the Bible, it says that in the last days, God's going to pour out his spirit. 
men, older men should have dreams. And it's going to be the young kids. But you guys are going to have the visions. You guys are going to be the speakers. God has it in you. God has ordained you and anointed you. So today, Dr. B, encourage you to go. Be prepared for the journey and be everything that God has called you to be. Everyone, please clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. Amen. At this time, um, before I turn over to Ms. Kanat, can I just have everyone, everyone stand up again real quick? Yeah, shake it off. I know y'all sleepy. Get up. Real quick, repeat these words after me. Father, I ask you for forgiveness. Come into my life and save me. God, purify my thoughts. Purify my ways. God, purify my mind. Forgive me, O oh God, for not living in my purpose. Speak to my heart. Speak to my mind. Speak to my soul. In Jesus' name, amen.